Number 28. Part of riding a bicycle involves leaning at the correct angle when making a turn, as seen in figure 6.36. To be stable, the force exerted by the ground must be on a line going through the center of gravity. The force on the bicycle wheel can be resolved into two perpendicular components. Friction parallel to the road, this must supply the centripetal force, and the vertical normal force, which must equal the system's weight. Letter A. Show that theta, as defined in the figure, is related to the speed v and radius of curvature r for the turn in the same way as for an ideally banked roadway. That is this equation. All right. So here I created a picture that basically is the same thing as represented up here. The other thing I added is just this top parallel line to the uh, frictional force just for um, illustrative purposes. So they gave me this angle in here, theta, but I'm also saying that this angle over here is the same. Now that should make sense, right? Let's just say that this is 30. If this angle here is 30 and you know that this is a right angle, what is this angle up here? Well, that's gonna be 60. Right? Remember, all angles add up to 120 in a triangle. And if this is 60, knowing that this creates a right angle here, what is this missing angle? It's also 30, right? So they do match. So, okay. So now we got that out of the way. So those thetas are the same. Now, they told me in the problem here, they said that the um, centripetal force is, is, um, is applied by the friction right between the tires and the road. So the frictional force here is the same as the centripetal force. So I'm going to make them equal. Okay. Now, let's start off with the formula. Let's start off with the centripetal force formula over here on the right-hand side. Okay. So let's write centripetal force is equal to mass times acceleration. And that's centripetal acceleration. So what I need now need to do is somehow try to get, well, first theta involved into this equation. How can I do so? Well, I see probably the easiest way to do so is by relating theta to the um, centripetal force here, right? By using some trig. And I'm going to incorporate the hypotenuse of this. Okay, so if I'm incorporating the hypotenuse of my triangle here, right? And this angle and the side opposite, what am I doing? I'm doing sine. So sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So the sine of that angle should be equal to the centripetal force divided by F. Solve this for centripetal force, all I gotta do is cross multiply here, right? So centripetal force will equal F, whatever this force is, multiplied by sine of theta. Okay, now this centripetal force is the, literally the same thing as this. So what that means is I can take this and plug it on in for it in the formula. So here we go. So this is F now, sine of theta is equal to MAC. Great. Now, let's see. Somehow, right now I'm thinking about it, somehow I'm looking at my equation here and I realize, well, there's no mass in it, but I have mass here, so somehow I gotta, I gotta get it to go bye-bye, right? I gotta cancel it. So how am I gonna do so? Well, I'm looking at my picture and I'm like, well, I know the weight, right, is equal to mg, and if somehow I can get the weight in here for f, I can cancel those masses. That may help. So I'm thinking now, well, how, how do I get weight into the formula via F? Well, how are they related? How are these two things related? Well, they're related via this angle, right? It's a triangle again. So I'm thinking about maybe using some cosine here, right? Because hypotenuse, angle, this is the side adjacent. So let's do that. So cosine of theta is equal to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse. Cosine of that angle will equal the weight divided by F. Now solve this thing for F. Okay, remember this is really over one. I mean, I drew it down a little low, but you can basically just switch this numerator. Come on, this numerator with this denominator. Okay, so when you solve that on out, you should get, let me just backtrack, you should get now F is equal to W over cosine of theta. Now this is great because literally now, I know this F here Right, and this F are the same thing. I mean, I use the same F in both of these equations. So what that means is that now I can substitute this right on in to my equation. So instead of writing F here, I'm gonna write now W cosine of theta. So let's write that. So, w, well not W cosine, W divided by cosine of theta, right? Then times the sine of theta will be equal to MAC. 
All right, now I see one thing right away. I got sine divided by cosine, essentially, right? Now that has to ring some alarm bells in a good way, right? Sine of a cosine is what? Tangent. Oh, look at that. Oh, I see tangent in here. All right, we must be getting warmer. So now W times the tangent of theta will equal MAC. Let's expand this W to be MG, right? Because that is the case. So we can now see that we're going to cancel the M on that side, right? The M on the other side, that's what my plan was. So we got them to cancel. So now we got G, right, times the tangent of theta is equal to centripetal acceleration. Okay, now let me take a step back. I see I have centripetal acceleration in my formula down here, but I look back to here and I don't have it at all. But I'm noticing some, some things I recognize, right? I'm seeing what well, I got a V squared, I got an R. I know I have a G in here, right? But I, I notice I'm missing a V squared and an R. So I'm thinking to myself, well, how? Is there any way that centripetal acceleration is related to those things? Oh, wait a minute. Look on the right-hand side, guys. There it is. There's the relationship. Okay, so I know that now I can plug in V squared over R for the centripetal acceleration. So let's do that. So this is G times the tangent of theta is equal to V squared over R. We are very, very close now, okay? So now, basically, I gotta get rid of the G on this side. So you can divide, you know, divide this side by G or multiply it by one over G. You might see that a little better. Multiply them the other side by one over G. The G's cancel here. We're left with, follow me on the top here. Now it's tangent of theta will be equal to V squared divided by R times G. We are right there. All we have to now do is get rid of the tangent. And we do that by taking the inverse tan of both sides, okay? So it's basically right tan to the minus one of this thing, and then tan to the minus one of that whole side. So then that gets us, this cancels the tangent over here. So we get now theta equaling inverse tangent of V squared over RG. And voila. There it is, ladies and gentlemen. We found it. All right. So not too bad. That was letter A. Let's take now. Uh, let's take a look now at uh, letter B. Okay. So let's take a look at letter B. Calculate data for a 12 meter per second turn of radius 3, 30 meters, as in a race. All right. So it looks like we're just plugging it in, right? Thank God. All right. So theta here is going to equal the inverse tangent, right, of uh, the velocity, which they gave to us as 12, right, 12.0, that's gonna be squared. Divide that by then the radius, which was 30, multiplied by G, 9.80. All right, I love these type of problems where they just plug in, right? I mean, do you agree with me? I agree. So, inverse tangent of 12 squared divided by parentheses 30 times 9.8, close those parentheses, and we get a value of 26.1. All right, so 26.1 degrees, that is the angle, okay? So, excellent. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this helped. It's not that It's not that bad, right? It's, it's just a couple of substitutions. It's like, the hardest thing I always thought when I was doing a class like this was, how do I know where to start? You know, that's always sometimes the hardest part. Now, sometimes it takes a little foresight and a little planning, okay? And it takes a little experience too. And as you do more and more of these questions, you will begin to see some of the patterns. It's tough to see at the start. Don't get frustrated. Keep going, all right? I know you can get there. So thanks guys for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care.